Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to the channel where today we are diving into one of my absolute favourite topics, turbochargers, that magical snail that turns ordinary engines into fire breathing monsters. But we're not talking about turbos in general, we're looking at the history of the turbocharger in road cars and focusing predominantly on those cars in Europe. And of course, how that all led to the legend that is the Audi TT Mark I. So buckle up because this is going to spool hard. So let's rewind slightly. Turbochargers started off in aviation and motorsport. Engineers wanted more power at altitude, more grunt, but without the massive engines. The idea was simple, take those exhaust gases that are being wasted and use them to foot more air into the engine. More air, more fuel, more boom. And in Europe it wasn't until the 1960s and the 1970s that car makers started experimenting with putting turbos in road cars. Yes, the turbocharged era had begun in Formula 1 in the late 1970s with Renault taking the lead and achieving some success. But who do we have to thank for bringing turbos to the masses? Well it's actually Saab and in 1978 Saab came out with the Saab 99 Turbo and it was a complete game changer and it wasn't just about raw power, it made turbocharging reliable and practical for everyday use. Suddenly family cars could have performance on tap and that was huge. Now once Saab had opened the floodgates, other European manufacturers jumped in. BMW, Porsche, Fiat, of course Renault had made the transition from Formula 1 and of course Audi. Think of icons like the Porsche 911, the BMW 2002 Turbo and of course the Renault 5 GT Turbo. All of these proved that turbocharging an engine could be exciting, scary and brilliant all at once. These were cars that built a reputation of a turbo being something exotic, something that gave you a kick in the back when the boost kicked in. But alongside these wild machines, the turbo was also finding its way into more mainstream cars. The efficiency side of things mattered just as much as performance. Europe in the 1980s and 90s was turbo central. It works by using the engine exhaust gases, normally just wasted energy, from the exhaust manifold to spin a turbine. This turbine is connected to a compressor on the other side which forces more air into the engine cylinders. Since petrol engines need a precise mix of air and fuel to burn, pushing in more air means you can add more fuel and the result is a bigger, more powerful explosion inside the cylinder giving the car extra performance without needing a larger engine. And one of the clever parts of a turbo is how it recycles energy. Instead of letting hot exhaust gas just exit through the tailpipe, the turbo harnesses this energy to create boost pressure. This boost allows even a small engine to perform like a much larger one, often improving efficiency as well. However, because the turbo relies on exhaust flow, there can be a slight delay, known as turbo lag, before it kicks in fully. Once it does though, the driver experiences a noticeable surge in acceleration, which is why turbos are so popular in both performance and everyday petrol cars today. And then we get to Audi. Now you can't talk about turbos in Europe without mentioning Audi's rally dominance of the 1980s. The legendary Quattro, turbocharged, four-wheel drive, absolutely rewriting the record book and of course the possibilities of rallying. That reputation bled into their road cars. Suddenly Audi was no longer just a posh Volkswagen. It was something serious, something boosted and something with motorsport DNA. And by the late 1990s, Audi was looking for that halo car. Something stylish, affordable, but still connected to that performance heritage. 
enter the Mark 1 Audi TT. And here's where the turbo story really shines. The Mark 1 TT launched in 1998, as I'm sure most of you watching this video are well aware. And under that sleek Bauhaus designed bodywork was the 1.8T engine, one of the most tunable turbocharged engines of its era. Depending on the trim, that engine would come in a 150 brake horsepower, 180, 225, or the top end 240 brake horsepower engine in the Quattro Sport. All of this being delivered from the factory. And that was just the start. You see, the 1.8T is built like a tank. It has strong internals, a proper turbo setup, endless aftermarket support. Swap out that K03 for a K04 turbo, upgrade the intercooler, map it right, and suddenly you're making performance and power numbers rivaling cars twice the price. The TT's turbocharged platform became the entry point for enthusiasts. It was stylish, it was practical, but most importantly, it gave you the addictive turbo experience. The whoosh, the flutter, the spool, it turned an ordinary commute into an event. And let's not forget the Mark 1 TT also laying the groundwork for Audi's future turbocharged engines. What you see in the modern S and RS series of car, that can all trace its roots back to that 1.8T era. So when you look at the history of European turbocharged cars, it's a story of innovation, of bringing motorsport technology to the street, and of brands carving out their identity with forced induction. Saab may have started it and Porsche made it iconic, but Audi, with cars like the Quattro and the Audi TT Mark 1, they made turbocharging part of their DNA. The Mark 1 TT stands as a perfect example of why we love turbo cars. Affordable performance, endless tuning potential, and a driving experience that is pure fun. And that, my friends, is why the turbo isn't just a piece of engineering, it is a cultural phenomenon. And the Audi TT Mark 1 is right there at its beating heart. So what is your favorite turbocharged car of all time? Is it the Audi TT Mark 1? Perhaps it's the Porsche 911 or the Saab 99 Turbo, or maybe that Renault 5 GT Turbo of the hot hatch era of the 80s. Whichever it is, why don't you leave me a comment below so we can work out which is king of the turbos. And I would love to hear your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this little boost through history, then why not think about giving this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already done so, where you'll find a whole host of content on the Audi TT Mark 1. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon. Keep boosting and take care.